What's going on guys, me Davey here back for another shave. It's been a little while, man. It's been a little bit of a chaotic uh, week and a half or so, um, but I am here. I actually got some honing done this past week, but I'll get into that in a moment. First, we're going to get into the star of the show. Bam. Oh, shit, look at that. Bam. Hotel. Fuck. Which way does it go? Okay, the fucking label's messing me up. Hotel Cecil. Uh, this is the CK6 formula version of from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. This is their last, I believe, um, kind of like Halloween-ish theme. Hotel Cecil is a hotel here in Los Angeles on Skid Row that is known to be one of the most haunted uh, places in the world. So a lot of crazy shit goes on right there. And, um, and yeah, in... Douglas decided to base this soap off of an old vintage aftershave, Burmese shave. Um, long story short, this is going to be old school spicy with a real powdery note up front, which I love powdery. Uh, to this day, I love baby powder. I don't have much of a use for it, but I love baby powder. I love powdery scents, um, something like tobacco. Um, I've always described it as a manly baby powder, which is one of my favorite scents in all of wet shaving. So, um, hold up. And it actually comes with some extras. Give me a second. So, Douglas, I, I am back, obviously. So, Douglas puts a lot of thought into the background and story to a lot of his soaps. Um, and, of course, Hotel Cecil was no different. He actually put in a little extra work that I was even surprised. Bam. Here's one, one of the items that come. If you're one of the first 50 to 100. I can't remember what number amount he said. If you watch Real Talk, he said it on there. But he actually wrote a story integrating the lore of Hotel Cecil. So he actually wrote his own original story with it. That'll come with, with the first set. So if you're interested in buying this, make sure you get it as soon as it's released. Also, a nice little cool souvenir. It's an old classic key that actually also doubles as a, as a bottle opener, which is always very useful. Thank you very much. And it has the Hotel Cecil tag, room number, the whole deal. The address of the hotel. It's just cool. It's a really cool little... And I usually don't care about the extras. But I do appreciate the thought that went into these extras. Um, this is actually going to go on my keychain. I love the look of these old school keys. I am a kind of a... I have a thing for keychains. Uh, my keychains in high school was ridiculous. Uh, I'm a grown-up now, and I probably shouldn't have as many as I did back then, but I've always had a thing for keychains. So this is actually one of your extras, Douglas. If you're watching, this is actually going to be used. <laughs> and I like the 55 door hangers that I have from you. Uh, but yeah, real cool key. I just love these old-school key-looking things. Well, not key-looking things. This is a, a old-school style key, and I just, I just love the work and thought that comes behind it. The fact that he wrote a little mini book, sorry. That, that kind of shows. So um, even though I'm not typically into that, Rocio loves ha haunted uh, locations around the world. And she's actually going to read that book. So once again, probably for one of the first times ever, one of these many extras that can possibly come with the Phoenix um, release is going to be used. Rocio loves to read. She loves books. And again, this is a genre that she really enjoys. So Rocio's going to get a lot of use out of that book. And I, I really, really like the fucking key. It's stupid. I know it's a novel thing. Is it necessary? No, but I actually really, really enjoy that. Um, yeah, I don't know why I have a thing for, for keys and keychains. It's, it's odd. I, I know it's not something I don't really have an opportunity to talk about that much on here, but alas, here we are. So that's going to be that. And then today I'm going to be doing actually a side by side comparison. This razor right here, I honed and I finished it on a 12K. Uh, synthetic uh, Naniwa Superstone. This one went through my normal progression um, through all the way to a cuticle. So just to see the differences, see, I wanted to see how much um, sharpness that the cuticle is possibly taking off of it. I want to see the differences in smoothness and all that good stuff. So it probably would be best to do something like this with um, razors that were identical or at least the same size. But at the end of the day, these are just stuff that I have laying around the house and I don't have a bunch of the same shit laying around. It just doesn't happen. So we're going to get into it. Today I'm going to be using the Viking. The Viking soaps brush hybrid. I have the. I'm starting to forget what not to have in these brushes. Damn it. I do believe this is the Hair Force One. I'll have to look back at some of my posts on Instagram. Because I always tag uh, who the damn uh, 
uh, knots are getting from whether it be maggots or strike gold shave or whatever the case may be. So I don't necessarily have to talk too much about the performance. If you've used CK6, you know how good it is. If you don't like it, you probably, there's probably some underlying reasons why you don't like or use it. Um, it is a little bit pricier. CK6 has a tendency to be about $24, um, which I don't talk too much about price unless things are outrageous. 25 bucks is my max that I will spend on soaps. Full disclosure, Douglas did send this to me. Um, so, you know, just so you guys know, it's not like it would matter one way or the other. I, I rave about the CK6 formula. And just given the opportunity to have some of these, again, these extras were actually fun for me. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know how much I love this formula. I find it to be one of the easiest soaps in the industry to lather. And if you've used a bunch of different soaps, you kind of know what I mean by that. If you're newer, haven't used that many soaps, you probably won't get that really, but it's really not that big a deal. Just know it's a really good soap. It is at the higher end though that I am willing to pay for a soap. Maybe nowadays on the rare occasion, I might consider to get one of the releases from like uh, Sanapaccio uh, 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 Veracino. There's somebody I would consider getting, but even then, it'd be maybe once a year I might get something from them at that at close to $40 range. Nowadays, though, uh, pretty standard 20 to 25 bucks is going to be what I'm expecting to pay. Anything that comes out under than that, that's just an added benefit. And it, it definitely brings some added value. And I'll definitely highlight soaps or like really express the great value of them, especially if they're giving more ounces. Like if you got like a six ounce soap, um, something like Moon Soaps, you know how much I love Moon Soaps. They are at that $20 range and they give you six ounces. So great, great value, especially if you're somebody that doesn't keep a large amount of soaps. Realistically, I could get two ounce soaps and they'll last me forever because I rotate so much new items in. Now, I really feel like I'm getting boned at that point if I'm buying two ounces of soap for this price, which I have a soap in here somewhere um, that I got from the razor company that... That, that soap is really shafting you right there. But that's more my fault because I didn't actually notice uh, that it was such a little amount. Because industry standard is minimum four ounces. Now you will find the occasional outliers out there, but it still is not very common. So I don't usually pay attention to the ounces for the price. So on this right side, I'm first going to start off with the Spartacus. I actually got this razor at a flea market. It's a little beat up. It's at a flea market. What did you expect? Uh, what could you expect? But I got it for 10 bucks. Seven eighths razor, modern production, tears of sard. Um, just really cool for $10. Cleaned it up a little bit, cleaned up some of the rust. Um, and I'm probably, I'm probably going to sell this. Hold on. Somebody's calling me that I don't know who they are. Sorry, sorry about that. I apologize. I kind of got stuck there. I'll probably be sending this to my homie Ed Munoz. He actually already said that he's interested in it. So I'll probably send this over to him after I get a couple uses and test out this edge. Oh. That's pretty nice. Hmm. So the last time I tried an edge that I finished on a 12K, um, it, was, it was much rougher than what I already feel on this. And I was just less experienced. I was probably a little bit more brutish with my style in terms of honing. I have quite a bit more experience now. I'm still no pro, but I have a few dozen edges uh, to my name at this point. There we 
go. So not the sharpest. I think I still gotta go back. I think I might go back with this on the 5K, get a little bit. It's not uncomfortable at all, but I don't, I, I think it's lacking some sharpness and I'm trying to have a much um, shorter process in terms of my honing. Um, I think I was doing a lot of over honing and I think that could have also been taken away from sharpness. So I think that one actually may need a little bit more work, but it's definitely not uncomfortable. Now we'll go on to the one where I finished on the codicle. Hmm. Getting a lot of feedback from the razor. Very nice. Hmm. Interesting enough, this is the codical one, and I think I may have a sharper edge on this one. Man, look at that. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but I do have more leftover hair. I got cleaner down here. So what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to switch the sides. So the 7 8 razor on the 12K is going to get this side. I got some soap in my mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> Gross. Soap is not fun to eat. Get some more water in there. I could definitely push the water content. Get this nice and slick. So, shout out to my boy Junior. The dude is shaving. He actually tried to back for the very first time a couple days ago and loved it. He loved the scent, loved the performance. Tabac is an old school classic. It is amazing. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, because it has that, that manly baby powder, which is supposed to be, I guess it's supposed to be like green tobacco, so to speak. Um, he loved it so I'm excited about that I actually have two jars of tobacco never gotten rid of them I have them here I just I love it so we're gonna go ahead and get the It's definitely sharp enough. It's definitely sharp enough. It's getting the job done. We'll definitely get to test the sharpness of the codical one. It's funny. You wouldn't think it's a big deal, but it actually feels kind of funny um, shaving with two different razors or two different sizes. I wouldn't. This is my first time doing a side by side like this. And then I don't think I've even ever done it with a um, with de erasers. One thing about these German razors, I feel the steel's quite a bit, excuse me, got a little bit of like that acid reflux. It makes me burp. But these uh, vintage German, I feel like the blades, well, the metal feels a bit soft. I really felt like these, these were able to take edges uh, with pretty significant uh, less effort. Uh, than a gold dollar than um, some of these Japanese vintages that I have in.
And I don't I don't mean that to say like as if it's cheap metal. It's just the Rockwell hardness of it's probably a little bit lower than some of the other ones. I got that little bit of a caffeine shake. Forgive me if you notice that. Cool. Very nice. Go ahead and rinse this. Very nice. So, um, I was actually going to do this this video tonight, but the Dodger game, Dodgers game six, is going to be on right now in just a few minutes. And just in case they lose, if they lose, I'm going to be in a horrible mood tonight. That means, no, once again, no video will get done. So I'm like, I better get this in beforehand, even if possibly I miss a couple things going on in the first inning. Uh, because, yeah, I will be in a very unapproachable, shitty mood if the Dodgers lose. Now, again, okay, we won't be eliminated. We still got game seven. Uh, but damn it, we needed to take care of business. We need to take care of business, man. We are the more talented team, and I think we really got to impose our will and show that we are. Much like if you watch basketball, much like the Lakers did in game six, just completely wore down the heat to where the heat just had no more fight left of them in, in that last game. That's what we got to do here. Really, I think I'm pretty good with both of these edges, man. I still don't feel that my edges are that damn sharp. I don't know what I'm doing. That they still don't feel as sharp as like Chris Bailey's edge was. Or edges that I've gotten from the Stallion. Feel good though. Even this 12K one is pretty damn comfortable. The subsequent passes, they feel very similar in terms of the performance. That initial pass, I do feel that the cortical edge, um, funny enough, with the green, felt better cutting through the hair. So, I don't know what exactly that means, but the subsequent passes have been pretty damn similar. Very nice. And the bevel, little uneven. So I hear there's a lot of geometry issues with Tears of Sards. Um, I know Anthony said it. I know, um, I think Ray Pope even said it when we we're on a live chat. I was uh, I was honing this with Ray and a few other guys on the on the chat. And they said that, yeah, Tears of Sards has a tendency to have some geometry issues. So an uneven bevel is probably not too outrageous, but it is nice. It's tight, reasonably thin. So that's cool. This vintage one actually has a pretty damn even bevel all the way through. I have a tendency, and this is something I'm seeing in the razors that I hone, to get a little heavy handed towards the tip and those bevels seem to be a little bit bigger. That could potentially be a problem. If I hone a razor a lot of times, I could create a smile in it. I kind of like smiling blades, but that's not how they're intended to be. So I got to figure out how to fix that in terms of the pressure that I'm using. And as again, as expected, the soap's doing great, real slick. I push the water. I just feels like everything's gliding real nice. I have a little too many razors, a few too many razors, so I may even sell this one. Probably cheap. Maybe 30 bucks. It's honed. Again, as long as you have medium to light growth, I know it'll shave well. Somebody like Araza or maybe even Anthony may. I don't know how they would feel about this edge. Um, but yeah, medium growth to, to light. I think it's a pretty good situation. And this one right here, I know I am going to take the sandpaper to it and give it a nice mirror finish. I'm going to... It just has like, it looks like staining almost. 
You never know. There could be some rust hiding in those little fucking marks. So I'm going to take them off, you know, and then just see, see from there. Mom. Hey, babe. Hey. I'm in the restroom finishing up a video. Okay. Would you want to pop in and say hi? Uh, no. Hello, no. I'm going to make the right, okay? Okay, I'll be out there right now. Go. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Right up. Just gotta make sure the mustache cleaned up a little bit up here. There we go. Cool. Probably not perfect, but hey, pretty good, pretty good. All in all, well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off, and then we'll go ahead and get into final thoughts on the whole situation here. All right, I am back. I'm going to dry off with the Greg McDonald towel. Um, I've been noticing my shaves, usually the shaving portion is probably 10 to 12 minutes long. I know uh, Anthony uh, Esposito mentioned in his video that people make 20, 20 minute shave videos because he gets his done through 10. Um, I would hope that, the, and again, I don't think he was directing that towards me or anybody in particular, but a lot of us do. We're usually in that 20, anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. I try to stay at the lower end of 20, but I would hope that the talking brings some value and entertainment. Um, if you guys have been with me for years, maybe you're invested a little bit in my life. So I usually guys give you guys a little insight what's going on and I try to walk you through what's going on with the product. So I hope you guys find value in that. Um, but those edges really, really happy with them. Um, again, I would still love to be a little bit sharper and I think I'm going to start emailing Dr. Matt, see what, what, what recommendations and I'll be on probably the message Dr. Doug Bear as well. Because they're both comfortable. They're both very, very comfortable. I think the cortical edged out the synthetic edge a little bit in terms of my preferences. Uh, but not much. Not much at all. Um, if it wasn't for just wanting to practice, I probably wouldn't rehome these. But since I'm practicing still, I'll probably kill the edges and go again. But, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Hotel Cecil, if you like old school spicy and powdery, that's going to give you everything that you want and need right there. I'm going to go ahead and get the aftershave on. Here's the inspector for Nicola's aftershave hour. Oh, I got to get these damn, damn seal off. God damn it. Huh. Bam. Look at that. The key already came in, in, in handy, baby. So I'm going to get some of that on. And... There we go. So, hey guys, if you made it to this part of the video, you know how much of I, I appreciate you. Um, the world's still crazy, man. Election day's coming soon, and I just, guys, treat each other right. No matter who wins, whether it's Biden or Trump, um, we still gotta live amongst each other. We still gotta be able to have conversations and work things out. Stop using this damn election as an excuse to be an asshole all the time we don't need that so thank you guys stay safe stay healthy and i'll catch you on the next shave